We're now going to look at wire types in our drawing. Now, what I've done for you already is created a drawing IEC wire types, and I've put it into our AutoCAD electrical project, which is 11 settings configs. So there it is there, sheet 001 IEC wire types. We're running with the IEC standard, which is the European metric standard in this case. And what I've done is I've put a standard wiring ladder into the drawing. Now, before we go anywhere else, I'd like you to go to the Home tab on the ribbon and select one of these wires on the wiring ladder. And you'll see that they're on the wires layer. That's because I've deliberately put them on that layer. I'll just hit Escape to deselect that now. What we're going to look at is creating wire types. When you're using AutoCAD Electrical, you can define wire types as a layer. And that will always make sure that those wires stay on that layer. And more importantly, when you're obviously doing bills and materials and calculating things within the database on the drawing, it'll actually take that into account as well. So we go to our project first, select it, right click on it, and go to the properties on the shortcut menu there. And then go to the wire numbers tab at the top of the dialog box. Now, wire numbering, sequential, increment, none of that we're going to change. That can all stay as is. I want to put two new user columns. So click on Rename User Columns there. And we're going to put in there Type. And then User 2 will be Part Number. Now, in the UK, we would put Part Number like that. In the US, you might put a hash. It doesn't matter. It's just a user-defined column title. It's up to you. I'll just leave the hash in there for now. It says what it is, basically. I'll OK that, and then I'll OK that in the dialog box. Those settings have been set in the project. We go over now to our schematic tab, and we go to edit wires and wire numbers, this panel here. And if we go up here and see that little fly out there, click there, and you want create, edit, wire type. Brings up a great big dialog box, and we're going to create the new type here, number 15. You'll see there's already some existing layer names in there. What I'm going to do is work with a new layer. So the wire color, I'm going to make it red. Size, 2.5 millimeters. And I'm going to put an SQ in there, and you'll see why in a moment. So we've got wire color, which is what the percentage C stands for there. Size is percent %S. And you'll notice as I go through and set these, you'll see the layer name follow that convention. So all of your layer names will follow that convention there if you set up those little settings there, layer name format. So S is size, C is color. Also, notice there's our user columns, type and part number. Type, I'm going to change that to THHN, just something I pulled out of the hat there. And part number will be 500. Now, what we do is we check the layer name format and make sure that it's percent %S, percent %1, dash percent c can you see that it's putting all that information into the new layer name so once you've put all that information in like so you click on ok what that has done is defined a new smart layer for your wire numbering and you'll see how we convert that in a moment what i want you to do is go back to the home tab on the ribbon go to your layer pull down and look for your new layer and see whether it's there and you'll see there it is. But we didn't change the color. So we need to change the color. You don't want to change the color here. What we do, we go back to schematic, back to edit wires, wire numbers, click here and create edit wire type. There's number 15 there. I'll select it and change the color there to red. I'll OK that and I'll OK that. Now when I go back to the Home tab, and check for that layer again. It'll be up towards the top. And there it is there. 2.5 millimeters squared, THHN red. And you can see there, look, size, and then THHN, and then the dash, the red, the color, percent %S, percent %C, remember? Now, we don't need to make that our current layer. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the schematic tab, go to the pull down we were on, create edit wire type. We're going to change and convert our wire type. Now, what we can do is we can actually select the one we want to use, which is the one we've just created. Notice the current one with the X in it is wires. That's because the wiring ladder is on that layer at the moment. Now, I've got a choice. I can change all the wires in the network, 
convert lines to wires so I can go and select lines that are in the drawing that aren't wires. I'm going to undo both of those and pick what's in my drawing. I'm going to select wire or line. Now you'll notice because I didn't click on anything, I just clicked in the screen, it goes back. So I make sure that I pick like so, and then I pick each one. Okay, and it's taken me back each time. So if I go pick there, and it says select a wire or line, I can select it, okay it. Because I've selected that, you would have thought that it would have changed. No, what you've done is you've told AutoCAD that's the wire type I need to change. So now it's prompting me to select the objects. On the command line, it's now saying select wires and non wire liars to change. Select all of them, press enter to finish, and they update. Notice it only picks out the wire lines too. The connectors on the ladder stay on their own layer, which is symbols. Very, very clever stuff, this smart lines. Make sure you use it in your AutoCAD electrical projects. We're going to look now at drawing properties. When you add a drawing to the drawing list in your project, it always applies the project default values if you say yes to that prompt on the screen. So right now, our drawing, JIC Drawing Properties, is part of the project drawing list. So it will have the property settings applied from the project to the drawing properties. OK, that's fine. Now what I'm going to do, though, is remove this drawing. Right click and remove from the drawing list. You'll get a prompt, say yes to that, and it's taken out of the project list. That's fine. It's still a drawing in its own right, but it does not have the project default values applied to it. I'm going to zoom in now and just zoom in on that top left corner of the wiring ladder there. I'll save my drawing as well, just as a quick sanity check there to make sure that everything's saved. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the schematic tab, click on the icon menu. I'm going to add a relay or a contact. So I'll just pop a relay coil in and I'll just drop it there. And I'll just click on OK. I'm not going to worry about changing any of the properties. And you'll see there, CR1 is the actual tag for that particular coil. Now, OK, it's sitting on top of the wire there. I'm not too worried about that at the moment. Let's have a look now at when I apply the project values to this drawing. So I'll save the drawing, go to the project, right click, add active drawing. Do you want to apply the project default values to the drawing settings? Yes, I do. So that updates. You'll notice nothing changes in the drawing at all. What I'll do now, though, is I'm going to go here to the drawing, right click, properties and drawing properties. Now, there's a lot of information in your drawing properties. In here, this is your drawing settings. So you've got project, description one, description two, and you've got project code, installation code, location code. In this case, the one thing we will need to do, give it a sheet 002 because it's the next one down in the drawing list. Section and subsection are extra descriptor fields for database work and if you need to expand on the description of the drawing. Let's go to the components tab now at the top. And you'll see there component tag format and you'll see we've got percent %f percent %n. So that's the numbering format and at the moment it's sequential but it's starting at 1. I want the next one to start at 0, 0, 001. OK, so the next component I add will start at 0, 0, 001, not just 1. It's the same with your wire numbering. You can change the wire number format. So percent %n stands for number. So when you put a wire into the drawing, it'll give it the number. Again, sequentially, 0, 0, 001, and it's increments of 1. So that would be 0, 0, 002, 0, 0, 003. A good project practice to get into there when you're wire numbering, though, I've done that for training purposes, but normally you'd go for a sequential, say, 0, 010, as in 10, and then the increment would also be 10, because you never know when you need to add extra wires into a particular part of a project. You can also place the wire number above the wire, in line with the wire, and set the gaps, or below the wire. I normally go above. You can have the wire number centered, offset, again, you can specify the offset distance, and leaders are as required, always or never. Now, I just go as required there normally. I'll let AutoCAD Electrical make that decision for me. Cross-referencing is the same. Cross-reference, same drawing, you've got the drawing number. Between drawings, you've got percent %s, percent %n, so that's same, and then percent %n. You can see there, same, percent %n, and so on. You can set default button settings. Component cross-reference display, you can have it graphical, text, or table format. Styles, you've got arrow styles, PLC styles, wiring styles, fan in and out marker styles. 
Again, I rarely change any of that. I tend to just use the defaults in AutoCAD Electrical or I use the default project settings. And drawing format, if I'm placing a ladder, it can either be vertical or horizontal as a default, width, multi-wire spacing, format referencing, scaling, standard stuff, but you can set it all as a default in your drawing. So I'll OK that now. As you can see, it updates. What I'll do now is I'll go back up to the schematic tab, back to the icon menu, and I'll select another relay contact and I'll go for another relay coil. I'll place this one, say, there. Notice the component tag numbering has changed because of my drawing settings. If I OK repeat and then go and place another one below, like so, CR002 because it's sequential. I'll OK that. And as you can see, it numbers up differently. Now, the good thing is I can go in here. There's nothing to stop me editing this one. I can just go edit component. So select it, right click it. I can change that to say 003. It's the next component tag along and I OK that. Let's put another one in and see what happens. If I put another relay coil in and pop it there. It finds the three that I've already placed. Click on OK and makes that four. So these drawing properties make your life so much easier. Make sure you use them.